another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 40, which is the wine box die set. So this actually creates an enormous um, box to be able to dress up a bottle of wine really nicely um, and the base of the bottle of wine sits in the bottom of the box then the top portion sits on top and the uh, head of, or neck of the bottle would stick out of the hole in the top of it and I reckon you could uh, not just have to use this for wine bottles I reckon you could use it for um, cordials and um, other uh, you know, like press a kind of things that come in glass bottles with the long neck on them as well. You could definitely put something non-alcoholic um, in this as well, even though it's called the wine box, because it fits a wine bottle absolutely perfectly. But it's a really decent sized project for you to create, um, and it goes together really easily actually as well. It's a very simple one to do. So... Let's have a look at all of the elements from the die set. I do actually have a duplicate of the Just For You sentiment rather than the, I think it's called Time For Wine or Wine Time um, sentiment that uh, should also be in here as well. So there will be a different sentiment than uh, what I've got to show you. Um, but it's a really, really simple uh, set to put together. So that bottom portion of the box is created using this square die plus these side panel dies. So literally, you're just cutting uh, two of these because you want to sandwich the glue tabs in between them and then four of the side pieces and you glue them all together and it creates a little box element. But you also have glue tabs on the top of this as well because for the top of the little uh, base portion, you actually cut this piece plus the circle that you've got in here as well and you create a top portion of the little bottom box where the wine bottle will fit absolutely perfectly inside and it's going to keep it more secure because it's in a circular hole rather than a square hole as well so you've actually got all of those pieces to create that bottom portion of the box then for the base of the top of the box you're also going to be using this circular portion so that it's really going to hold that bottle um, in the right position so you will also be using that as the base for the top of the box and then for the top of the box you have these two arched pieces so this is the front and back of the box. You actually want to cut four of these so that you can again sandwich your glue tabs in there as well. And this actually goes together similar to the post box that came out, uh, the special delivery post box. I think it was called a post box, maybe it was called a mail box. Um, anyway, the, the special delivery one that came out as part of birthday week, um, that arch kind of way, it's a similar way of putting it together. However, the side pieces that curve up the sides of the box, because this is such a large box compared to that post box, um, you actually need two of them. So you actually uh, cut the glue tab off of one of them, glue them together to create a really long strip, and then you curve the two of them all the way around the arch of the top of the box. And that's why you need um, two of these pieces. In the video where I was talking about that, that, um, post box I said the way I like to do it was to cut uh, a second one of these and squish the tabs around that one and then put a better one a prettier one on the top and that's exactly how the instructions tell you to put this one together so I presume the instructions told you to put the post box together that way as well so um, it is definitely a good way of putting this together but those are all of the basic construction pieces but then you have all of the decorative pieces as always you get beautiful decorative portions this piece in particular is absolutely beautiful and uh, I know I love to make small cards but if you like five by seven sort of sized cards this is the perfect arch kind of way to put on a five by seven card um, or possibly if you like to make a seven inch tall one but maybe only four inches wide perhaps yeah, so maybe it would go on a DL card, actually. Is that the same width? Yeah. So possibly that one would fit really nicely on a DL card blank as well, if you wanted to use it that way too. But you can also use this one for your smaller cards too, which I'll show you later on in the video. I just wanted to show you that visually of how that archway fits nicely on a 5x7 card as well, if you like to make slightly larger cards. So all of the decorative panels wise, you have the archway piece that goes on the front and the back of the box um, and you can cut that from a patterned paper. And then you also have the beautiful decorative piece as well. And this portion in the centre, it has an, an oval missing from the design, which 
if you just cut this die into that die, you'll just have a solid oval kind of shape there. But you also have the outside of the sentiment, so you could cut this as an aperture if you wanted to as well, and have that as an oval aperture within the design. Or you can leave it solid and layer this on top of it. But look at the beautiful detail that's in here. You've got this gorgeous, like, uh, straight line detail that comes down the middle. You've got, like, heart elements in here. You've got swirly flourish elements. Really, really pretty design. But you don't have to use the pretty design if you don't want to. If you're making a lot of these, or maybe you're doing them as, like, uh, you're going to a Halloween party or... Um, a birthday party or something you want it to be really simple looking you can definitely use your patterned papers or even like wrapping paper as well if you had a beautiful wrapping paper that you really wanted to use you could use the outside edges to cut wrapping paper too um, so that's the oval kind of portion and then to go around the sides of the box um, where the you have the hole in the top for the neck of the bottle you have this stunning patterned uh, panel as well and again you get the outside edge so that you can just cut it from wrapping paper patterned paper whatever you want to maybe something inky that you've done on the jelly plate as well um, and then again it, it follows on with the same kind of pattern so you've got these gorgeous like stripy elements down the middle almost that heart kind of design in here as well and then gorgeous swirly flourishes and it's a very symmetrical kind of design too that looks really lovely when it then goes back around the other side of the box too and this almost looks like a, a fleur-de-lis in here actually as well so you've got other elements that you could snip out of there if you wanted to and use them on your cards too. Or accent the box and snip around that and add it back on again as a different element too. So you've got um, those patterned panels for the main portion of the box. And then you also have the coordinating uh, rectangle for that base of the box. Because you do see the base of the box. Sometimes with tonic die sets the base is hidden within the lid. But this is part of the height of the wine bottle so you will see the base of the box um, plus the top of the box as well so you have the rectangle again for cutting out wrapping paper patterned paper whatever you want to and then the beautiful pattern again has that linear kind of piece down the center that gorgeous heart design and swirly flourishy designs as well and the heart design on this base portion of the piece actually coordinates with this little die here which is actually um, part of the clasp mechanism for how the top attaches to the bottom and you can secure it in place and the way they've done this they've made it in two half hearts and then these two little pieces with the hole go together but the half hearts actually fit that part of the design of the pattern so that you know exactly where to position them when you're putting them onto your box you just stick the two of these together at that little ring pull to create a heart with the ring pull sticking up and then you create and you then you place that heart directly over the top of the heart within the decorative panel and you get the perfect positioning for that little locking closing mechanism and then to go along with that closing mechanism you also have these pieces which give you the little slot that that little uh, ring pull sort of goes up into and you put one of these either side of the box and there's different ways of closing the box with this mechanism um, I think a lot of the time when tonic have some something like this a lot of the ladies in the craft room um, they like roll up a piece of paper really tightly and then like thread that through the hole or you could use a little bit of a cocktail stick or a kebab skewer and put it through the hole or you can actually wrap ribbon all the way around the end of the box and just thread it through those holes as you go around the box as well to secure it into place so you've got multiple ways of securing that. And then the final thing um, that's in the die set are the sentiments. So you get the oval, which, as I said before, you can actually turn that into more of like an aperture portion within the die set. And you've got that oval in there. Or you can just um, add a decorative oval on top of there from a, another patterned paper or something. Or you can use the sentiments in the centre of it as well. And you will need the outside edge to cut them out. They will just cut into the card. So, But actually, if you wanted to, you could just place that in there and cut it into the decorative panel as well, rather than having anything that layers up. But this one says, just for you, in a beautiful font. And then there is another one as well, which I don't have because I got two of the same one in my die set. So that's all of the dies in the die set. I'll put all of these away and then I'll come back and show you all the samples. So these are the two sample boxes that I created and you can see the difference that it makes using the decorative uh, panels or just using a gorgeous patterned paper and I was using the mulberry wine patterned paper that came out recently in birthday week so a lot of you have probably already got this in your stash um, and it's a great way of using these stunning patterns 
that are in that mulberry wine set and also to add extra embellishments on the front of it I just trimmed some of the flowers out one of the turquoise sheets has got some gorgeous um, individual flowers so I just trimmed around those because they're um, not sort of within clusters you can just trim around the separate flowers and then I've, I've actually put the sentiment further up than it's intended to go within the decorative piece you can put it further up or further down wherever you want to put it and also for the locking mechanism of this one um, instead of just having those latches stuck to the side of the box like here you just stick them to the side of the box I again cut extra flowers out and put them over the top to hide where it's stuck onto the top of the box and because the patterned papers are so kind of busy it sort of hides in that one hides better than this one but it kind of hides uh, within the design um, so you can't even tell and obviously with this one there is no um, indication of where to put the little heart piece because I haven't used the patterned panel on the bottom but it's very easy to just figure out uh, where you want those latches to go and this is the box where I threaded ribbon all the way through so this is the three millimeter bright white uh, craft perfect ribbon and I just threaded it all the way through tied it in a bow at the front I won't undo this one because I made it look pretty by tying a neat bow um, but and also to match that I did a little bow at the top as well and I did the base of the box from white so I've done the sentiment from white and then I've used all of the beautiful um, patterned papers on this as well it just looks so beautiful cut with patterned papers and that would just like enhance a cheap bottle of wine if you're going around to someone's house I don't actually have a bottle of wine to show you because I don't uh, drink alcohol but um, it does fit a perfect bottle of wine in it uh, really really nicely so it would look really fantastic with your uh, the stem of the bottle of wine coming out of the top and if you like to knit like my mum does you know she does extra little knitted things when I do samples for the telly um, she makes these knitted bottle toppers uh, to sit on the top of a bottle of wine so if you liked knitting and did those kind of things as well you could actually uh, make it as part of the the theme maybe as well and actually have a little character sitting on the bottom the top of the bottle of wine and make the whole box sort of go along uh, with the little character that's sitting on the top of it as well uh, which I think would be a cool way of using it so that's the patterned paper one that I have done and then this was actually using some of the papers or um, cardstock from the I think was it the Minty Christmas? No, I think it was the Peacock Bundle. Uh, but I just loved these two colours together when I was making those advent houses and stuff. Um, so this is the Turkish Turquoise and the Cobalt Velour. And I actually swapped... Um, how I cut them so the top of the box is done with the Turkish turquoise as the detail and the bottom of the box is done with the cobalt velour as the detail just to make it look a little bit different and I have um, I made the whole box out of uh, texture craft perfect and it works really nicely so if you don't have a lot of other cardstock in your stash but you have a lot of the texture craft perfect cardstock you can still construct this uh, from that kind of cardstock I can't 100% remember when I was cutting these out but I think the base colour I think it took five sheets so if you got um, in any of the sales recently if you got a lot of the texture craft perfect they come in packs of ten sheets so technically you would be able to get two um, bases for the wine boxes from a pack of card and you do have leftovers as well but you kind of need to break into more sheets to cut the larger pieces out um, but yeah I, th I think I think it was five sheets when I was cutting these but I actually feel I actually made these like a week ago and I haven't been in the mood to do it to film the videos um, so I can't 100% remember how many pieces I used to create them um, but yeah this one I haven't actually um, put a closure piece in here but it does still stay together so you can just use that locking piece and not even put anything to close them um, but to open it you just pull those over the top of the little loops and then you have your box there you can see how you have that circle element so the bottle will stand really nicely inside that bottom portion of the box you have the circle here to keep it in the right position um, as it goes up into the box and then you have the hole right at the top for the top of the wine bottle to go in so you can easily place that over the top of your bottle and then when you put the box back together you can just uh, place those they pretty much want to go back uh, where they came from and place them directly over the top of these pieces but you could tie um, a permanent ribbon on one side and maybe you kind of m more open it no that wouldn't work would it if it's got a bottle inside it um maybe you could i'm trying to think of different things for how to um close these kind of boxes well 
in my mind I'm thinking those tiny little padlocks that you used to get in crackers um, you could put a tiny little padlock on here as well or you could actually just use die cut padlocks because just poking a die cut through that um, would help keep that little latch in place as well so you could actually um, have little die cut padlocks hanging from here as well that could just be slid out if you cut you know the loop piece if you just cut a little um, notch out of it or a little uh, piece out of it so that you can actually thread it through the hole and it would just dangle down here that would look really lovely as well so uh, tons of different ways of closing these whether you do want to go um, with a beautiful ribbon running around it this doesn't have to be proper ribbon either if you wanted to keep the costs down um, this could be curling ribbon too um, you know and then maybe you could stick one of those beautiful rosettes on here as well that you get when you're wrapping up uh, presents maybe uh, do this more of like a Christmas theme maybe you've got a lot of patterned papers in your stash that you haven't used up um, I think I think you could get all of the pieces from one 12 by 12 sheet but I did break into another one because I had a scrap of uh, this one um, but I think if you were very frugal with the way you cut them out I think you could just about get all of the pieces from one 12 by 12 sheet but if you wanted to play around with different uh, patterned pieces then obviously you can mix and match and this portion at the bottom you could use 6 by 6 patterned papers and then you just need the larger uh, patterned papers A4 or 12 by 12 to do the side portions as well. So those are the two boxes that I did and then obviously I wanted to do matching cards for them. So the matching card for the uh, patterned paper one is actually tomorrow's tutorial video uh, which is creating a spinner card and I, I just filmed this one um, and as I was filming it I was thinking um, I feel like I've already shown you how to do a spinner card in a video before so I'm really sorry if I have but hopefully it will just refresh your memory if you haven't already seen me um, show you how to create a spinner card and uh, you can sort of load it up before you send it to somebody so just keep twisting and twisting and then you would close it and then put it in the envelope and then when they open it you'll get a gorgeous little spinning element in the front of the card so um, it's a really fun way of creating a different sort of interactive card and again with those patterned papers it just makes it so uh, quick and easy to create a really um, impactful kind of card with that spinning element but just using those patterned papers makes it really really quick and easy to do so that is tomorrow's tutorial video if you want to know how I created that card and then to go along with this box I use the same um, colours of cardstock and the same sentiment layering up in the same way but this is the side pattern so this gorgeous large side pattern um, and I just cut it into a piece of white cardstock and you can see how you can move it further up and down wherever you want it to be I think it's about here on this one um, that's sort of the positioning that I cut it from but it's a lovely width um, to go on a normal small little card and it doesn't matter that the pattern goes off the top and the bottom of it because you can just stick all those fiddly little bits down and it works really really nicely and instead of having all of the filigree um, elements visible this looks a little bit more masculine because I've actually used the strips of card to kind of cover up that central section that had sort of like the heart portions in there so you don't actually see the heart portions on the finished card which is nice as well it kind of makes it a tiny bit more masculine I also think this piece here would have looked lovely if I had used an embossing folder on it as well and you'd had like a little embossed pattern going down the centre too but I just wanted to do a quick uh, little card showing you how you can use those patterned panels onto your smaller cards as well to create a card that coordinates with your box too and again really quick and easy and simple to do and I'm sure you would have had all of these leftover pieces from cutting out all of these panels from the different colours of cardstock as well. So, I really hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at Tonic Showcase number 40, which is the wine box die set that creates this enormous box that houses um, a full size bottle of wine that just makes it really, really beautiful to gift to somebody. Um, and I think it's a, a lovely die set really simple to put together can definitely help you use up some of your patterned papers if you want to decorate them with patterned papers um, and just a lovely way of making a cheaper bottle of wine look like uh, it's more expensive by adding a beautiful box to it as well. So really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.